Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 1.5, the inverse function. Okay, so let's start with the definition. You'll notice I often have a shorthand um, DFN and that means definition. So that's right here, definition. The inverse reverses the effect of the function. That's what the inverse does. So that's the definition of the inverse. For example, if you have something like you're adding something, um, to reverse that effect you would subtract it. So that's the inverse of adding. And if you were subtracting something to reverse that, you would add you would add the same thing. And so there are inverses of each other. In fact, that's how inverses work. They should reverse each other. So one is the inverse of the other. Um, this works with multiplying and dividing and also works with squaring and square rooting, right? Okay. So Let's do an example. For f of x equals x squared, find the domain of f, the range of f, f inverse, the domain of f inverse, the range of f inverse. Graph the function and its inverse and state whether the inverse is a function. All right, so let's start with the domain and the range because it's f of x equals x squared, which is a pretty familiar uh, function. And by the way, if you have f of x equals x squared, f of x can be the y, so y equals x squared is technically what we're talking about. Okay, so the domain of f is x in r, there's no restriction, and the range of f is y in r, such that y is greater than or equal to zero. All right, so here's something that you really need to know, is that when you're trying to find the inverse, you need to switch the x and the y. This is good for algebraic, um, attempts to find the inverse and also works for graphical attempts to find the inverse. So what right now we're going to do both. So we'll find the algebraic version and then we'll also find the graph version by switching the x and the y. So starting with y equals x squared, when I want to find the inverse I'm going to switch the x and the y. So wherever there's a y I'm going to write x and wherever there's an x I'm going to write y and I'm going to isolate y that gives us a function, or actually sometimes it's not a function, which is why the question asks us whether or not the inverse is a function. So I'm going to isolate y. This is going to be square rooted, so I'll get the square root of x equals y. But be very careful, you also need that plus minus, because otherwise it's not complete. If you have just the square root, it's, we're going to assume that it is positive, so we need the plus minus in order to get the correct answer. And then we're going to write it in terms of f inverse of x. So f inverse of x equals plus minus root x. There you go. So that is the inverse. So we can find the domain and range of this inverse by graphing it, but we can also just look at the original domain and range, and that's going to help us out. Because again, remember, we want to switch the x and the y. So in the domain of the original, we have x's. So we know that this is going to actually end up being the range of the inverse. So the range of the inverse is y in r. Wherever you see an x, you're going to write y. And the domain is the range from the original. So the domain of f inverse is wherever you see the y's, you're going to write x's. So x in r such that x is greater than or equal to zero, like that. Okay, so I found the domains and the ranges, and so I'm going to graph the original and its inverse. So here we've got y equals x squared. I'm just going to graph it. Hopefully it's very familiar to you because we've been working on it for quite some time. Oop. There you go. And you want to um, connect the dots in a curvy and attractive manner. It's easier probably on pen and paper. I'm using a tablet right now. Okay, there you go. And you want to make sure you label that. That's f, or f of x. And it goes through zero, zero. Make a big dot there. Okay, so if I want to find the inverse, I can um, do it in a couple of different ways. The first way I'm going to try is to just reverse the x and the y. So wherever I have the coordinates, I can switch them. So here, zero, zero. If I flip zero and zero, it ends up being zero, zero still. One, one. If you flip them, they're the same, so it's still one, one. But here I've got negative one, one. So when I flip them, I actually am going to get one, negative one. Okay, so that's the flip. This one is two, four. So it's going to turn into four, two. Three, nine turns into nine, three. And it is the parabola, so it is symmetrical. 
You connect the dots in a curvy and attractive manner. On the one side and on the other side. And label it F inverse. Okay? So that's the easy way. You just switch the coordinates. There's another way that you can do it, and it's to use this y equals x line. You can actually just flip the original over the y equals x line and find the inverse. That is, if you have good spatial reasoning. I personally have horrible spatial reasoning, so I find this method very difficult. But one thing that you can do, even if you have really bad spatial reasoning, is to remember that whenever you're flipping over a line, whatever is on that line is going to stay fixed. It's going to stay exactly the same. That's why 0, 0 stays where it is, and 1, 1 stays where it is, but nothing else does, because nothing else touches that y equals x line. Okay? And so one more thing that the question asks us, is this a function? The answer is no, it is not a function. That's one of my other shorthands, is I'll often write f and then an n with an underline for function. Um, it is not a function because if we use the vertical line test, we can see that it fails. And you can also see this has a plus minus, so we could even tell from the equation that it was not a function. Okay, let's do example B. So it's asking us to find the radius of a sphere in terms of its volume. Now we are used to seeing the volume in, ter of the in terms of the radius. The radius is the independent variable and the volume is the dependent variable. So the, the formula for that is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So in other words, we could write in function notation v of r equals 4 over 3 pi r cubed, like this. In order to find the r of v, the radius in terms of the volume, we are just going to have to isolate the r. So you could change them into x and x's and y's, but that's a lot of work. And um, we just need to isolate it here, and it would be a little bit less confusing. So just a reminder that 4 over 3 pi is equal to 4 pi over 3. That's the same thing. So I'm going to divide everything by 4 pi over 3 to get 3v over 4 pi equals r cubed. And then we're going to cube root it. And we don't need the plus minus since it is an odd exponent. If it was a 4 or a 6, we would put the plus minus. And there we go. We've got the cube root of 3v over 4 pi equals r. And if you want to write that with function notation, you just write r of v like that. And because we're going to solve for something using the volume, um, we might as well just leave it that way. Okay, now you're probably asking yourself, do I need to memorize this formula? Yes, you do. Please memorize all of the formulas. You do need to know all of the volume formulas, all of the area, all the surface area. Um, so go back and memorize that. If you want an easy way to memorize those, you can come and ask me and I will tell you in class an easy way to memorize it. Okay, so you do need to go back and memorize those. Uh, so the second part, use the equation to find the radius if the volume is 548 meters cubed. So I'll just plug um, 548 into the V, wherever I see V, I'm going to write 548. So 3 times 548, let's just extend that a little bit, over 4 pi. And I have already figured out that this is, if I do the cube root of 3 times 548 divided by 4 pi, then r of 548, and this is not multiplication again, reminder, it is function notation, is approximately equal to 6.9. And this is in meters, because the original question says meters cubed. So if it's a word problem, make sure you have a word solution. The radius is approximately 6.9 meters. And there you go. So basically this unit, or this section was just about switching the x and the y in order to find the inverse and being able to find the domain and the range. Thanks, and I'll see you in class.